This week has been an amazing week to be a gamer. With both Sony and Microsoft announcing their new consoles and pricing, AMD teasing some upcoming launches, and of course Nvidia with their RTX 3080 launch, to much fanfare. Hidden inside that launch was a new software feature that anyone with a GTX 900 series card or newer can make use of, and it's called Nvidia Reflex. Much like AMD's Radeon Anti-Lag, it's a software tool feature that is designed to help reduce input lag. So from the time that you make a click on your mouse to the time that you see your gun firing in game. So is it any good? Is it better than AMD's Anti-Lag? Well, let's test it and find out. But first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Reducing the amount of input lag you have when playing games is really pretty important. I've been benchmarking and testing uh, things like projectors, for example, that have 200 milliseconds of input lag, and it feels like your mouse is moving through jelly. It feels like when you click, you have to wait an eternity for it to happen on screen, and it makes for a very unpleasant experience. Now, your gaming setup likely has anywhere between 20 and 60 milliseconds of input lag, depending on your system and also your display as well. That's kind of a big deal. And so reducing that time can be very beneficial. Now you don't always notice it to the eye, but being able to react to things faster, especially if you're talking 10 or 20 milliseconds faster, is a pretty big deal. Being able to see something on screen and have your brain register it 10 or 20 milliseconds before say someone else does, or being able to hit the mouse a few set or a few milliseconds before someone else can be the difference between hitting a shot and getting owned. Now where NVIDIA come in with all that is their new feature, NVIDIA Reflex. It's a, a feature that is built into both the driver and into the game engines, which means you have to be playing a supported game for you to be able to enable that feature. It's only currently in Fortnite, Valorant, and in theory Apex Legends, although when I went to test it, the, the option just wasn't there, so I I've only been able to test Fortnite and Valorant. Although in theory, there will be more games coming out soon. They've mentioned Destiny 2 as a game that they've already tested, so in theory, that will be soon, and hopefully more titles as well. But like I said, you have to be playing a supported game for it to work. So does it work? Well, if you have a 3080 or a 2080 Ti, there doesn't seem to be much reason for you to need to enable it. Taking a look at my Fortnite test results, uh, it's pretty much within margin of error here between the three options off, on, and on plus boost. Even the minimums and maximums are all pretty much within margin of error, so especially in a game like Fortnite, it doesn't really make sense. In Valorant, there is a slight difference between having off versus on versus on plus boost, but realistically, it's not a, a sizable enough difference that you should really care too much about the, the performance gains that you get from it. There doesn't seem to be any reason not to enable it, though, uh, and you may have some performance gains in different games depending on what games become available, but with the two that I was actually able to test, there doesn't seem to be too much reason if you have this type of cart. And the reason for that is what NVIDIA say here is that in GPU bound scenarios, you can get up to 50% faster. The key word there is GPU bound. If you're running a 1660 Ti or uh, that sort of card, this will make a lot more sense for you to enable than it would with these sorts of high-end cards. When the GPU isn't the bottleneck, there really isn't too much else that they can do to help optimize the, the render pipeline to have a, a frame shown to you any faster. For example, in Valorant, I was running at over 600 FPS in the little training setup uh, with the 2080 Ti, so there really isn't much it can do. Even testing at 1440p and using a Ryzen 9 3900X, you're still gonna have a hard time GPU bottlenecking or having the GPU be the bottleneck when the GPU is a 2080i. And so if you're to swap in for something like an RTX 2070, which is actually quite comparable to the test that I did with the RX 5700 XT and Radeon Anti-Lag, well, it gets a bit more interesting. Looking at the Fortnite data, this is worlds apart. You can see that with the uh, setting turned to off, you're getting 50 or 51 milliseconds of total system input lag versus with it on, you're getting 32 milliseconds. 
that's a sizable difference, nearly, what, 60% faster? And that can be the difference between you being able to hit a shot or being able to react quick enough to actually make a shot before someone else. It, it makes a very big difference. Now, you don't normally notice that to the eye. Your eyes don't normally notice the, the 10 to 20 millisecond differences. But, like I said, being able to see an enemy on screen 20 milliseconds earlier can be a pretty big deal in, in your in-game performance. Now in Valorant with the 27C, there wasn't much of a difference here. You're still running at ridiculously high frame rates, and so I think that the difference was about 5% going from off versus on plus boost, and so it doesn't really make all that much sense. If you were playing a more intensive game, uh, I imagine something like COD Modern Warfare would be a fantastic title for you to have this on, because reaction times are a really big deal in that, but unfortunately that's just not possible, and it doesn't sound like it's a feature that will be coming to COD Modern Warfare either, which brings me nicely onto the downsides. Because this is a solution that's built into both the driver and the game engine, and the game engine needs to support it natively, it means that unlike Radeon Anti-Lag, which is a, a system-wide toggle, you don't really get the benefit of having that faster input lag in, at least currently, games that could actually benefit from having faster input lag. Sure, with uh, much more GPU-bound scenarios, lower-end graphics cards, it could make more sense even in games like Fortnite or Valorant, and it's great that you can turn it on and seemingly have no consequences for it, but it doesn't really make all that much sense by comparison to the, the AMD solution. I think I prefer that, that option because you can just turn it on system-wide, and then no matter what game you're playing, you probably have a better input lag experience. Nevertheless, like I said, there doesn't seem to be much reason for you to not turn it on no matter what GPU you have, so feel free to, to go for it. I would be interested in seeing how Nvidia improves this over time, improves the, the game library that support it, and if you're interested in seeing me do a video, a follow-up to this, in like six months time to see how much better it is and what the different game performance is, feel free to hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments down below. Buds, yeah, I think I prefer AMD solution, but of course they're not directly comparable, so it's nice that there is an option for NVIDIA card users, even if it isn't quite as good as I, I maybe hoped it would be. Now with that said, those are my thoughts and test results, but I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Is this something that you're going to be enabling? Uh, if so, is it going to be because you have a lower end GPU and you might actually see a lot more benefit than I have? Uh, or would you just turn it on for the sake of it? Or do you have an AMD system and you use anti-lag? Anything at all, let me know in those comments down below. Now I'm going to leave a link to the GPUs that I've used here just for, uh, for sake, and I'll throw in a, a, an Amazon link to the 30AC if you want to check those out. Uh, those will be Amazon affiliate links that will take you to a local Amazon store where you can see pricing when you watch this because it can and does vary. Um, and those will also, like I said, support me since they're affiliate links too. There's also a load of other links in the description you can check out. There are affiliate links for people like Overclock UK if you're buying from them. There's merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other designs and stuff too. You can also check out some more videos over there. I'll leave the Radeon anti-lag video so that you can sort of compare between the two um, and see what you're thinking. That is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I said, if you've got any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. And otherwise, we'll see you on the next one.